page. Okay, so in this video, we've got our network flow diagram for doing critical path analysis, and we're going to start trying to fill in the boxes. Now, you can see I've turned my network diagram, which had single cells, into a box which has six squares in it, and each one of these responds to one of these. So the middle box on the top row is the duration of the activity. So that's the thing I'm going to flow it, fill in first. So duration of task A was seven. Duration of task B was two. Duration of task B, C was 15. Duration of task D, be careful because it's not in the place where you think it is, is eight. Duration of task E is 10. Duration of task F, was two, duration of task G was five, duration of task H was eight, duration of task I was two, and duration of task A is three. So I filled in the duration tasks. Now I need to start filling in the rest of the top row. So I've got the early start time and the early finish time. Now all task A, B, and C can start right from the very first start of the project. So they can start at time zero. But because task A takes seven days, task A will finish after seven days, task B will finish after two days, and task C will finish after 15 days. So I've worked out my early start time and my early finish time. Now, because task A and task B both have to happen before you can do task E, then the earliest we can start task E is the latest time between those two. So therefore, that the earliest time that can start is after seven. And therefore, it will finish after 17 days. Now, that is flowing into both task G and task D. So both of those can start after 17 days. Task D will finish after 24, no, 25 days, and task G will finish after 22 days. Okay, now task G is the only thing that happens before task H. So task H can finish, uh, can start after 22 days and will finish after 30 days. Whereas task F has to start after G and D are finished. So the earliest task F can start is after 25 days. That takes two days. Now, task I has to start after task F and task C. Task C finished on day 15, all the way back here, to task F finishes on 27. So the earliest I can start task I is after 27, and that takes us up to 29, and task J follows on from there, and that finishes at day 32. So I've done my forward run through my network diagram. Okay, now I have to work backwards and do these late finish times and late start times. So this is the latest possible time the task can start. Well, task J can start, or has to finish by day 32, because that's the last time, the last activity on the thing. But task H also finishes at the last possible chance. And the last possible chance you can finish task H is on day 32 as well, because that's the last thing you finished after that. Okay? And now to work back to our late start time, I take off the duration. So that's 29, that's 29, and that becomes 27. That's 27, so that comes down to 25, and that's 32, so that's 24. Now, when I come to fill in here, because I have to have finished, or because task H and task F have to be ready to start, the latest time I can finish task G is after 24. So on the way forward, we always picked up the biggest number, now we're working back, we always have to pick up the smallest number. Whereas task D didn't need any anything else apart from task F to be ready, so that can start after day 25. So that's 17, and that's 19. Now both 17, uh, G and D had to be ready to be done, so therefore this has to be 17, 
and therefore that becomes 7. Now here, 27, it could have started, so that finishes on time 12. This had to start by task 7, so therefore that finishes at 5 and 7 and 0. So we filled in most of our diagram now, looking at early start times, early finish times, late start time, late finish time. The bit in the middle at the bottom is the slack. And to find that, I find the difference between the first two numbers, top and bottom, or the last two numbers, top and bottom. Okay, so I'm going to say, I'm going to go, there's zero, there's zero. 25 and 25 is zero. 24 and 22 is two. 19 and 17 is two. 17 and 17 is zero. 7 and 7 is zero. 7 and 7 is zero. 5 and zero is five. And 0 and 12 is 12. Now, the way we identify our critical path is we look for the cells that have a 0 slack. So, my critical path is A, E, D, F, I, J. So, any delay on any one of those paths will delay my entire project. And... The time taken to complete the task is 32 days. Right, so that's my critical path diagram. I've managed to do that. The next thing we need to do is our Gantt diagram, and we'll do that in the next video.